This is Jamie here, and this evening I'm going to attempt a brief screencast to show you guys a little bit about how I created the uh, Papasan chair 3D model. So recently I had a commenter ask me uh, if I would be willing to do a screencast and uh, you know for a bit of a tutorial and I thought well I'll give it a shot. Um, the challenging part of this model uh, as mentioned by Tara is not so much the frame it's all pretty standard geometric shapes but the uh, cushion itself so creating the cushion of this chair was a bit of an iterative process I, I, I tried about four or five times and failed and uh, finally I developed a technique that I was happy with I'm not gonna go into the failures but I will show you which technique was successful for me the Papasan chair cushion is an interesting beast because it's 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 radial but it's radial and the entire surface is sort of evenly subdivided so the challenge is essentially keeping this radial look but not getting caught up in the pole that you get on a sphere so the first thing that I did was determine that I wanted to create this using a sphere but a sphere such as this one shown right here isn't really appropriate because it has this pointy pole which means that any modeling or effects that you apply to the surface of the sphere are gonna get really ugly once you encounter these triangles that ultimately converge at a point the way we get around that at least in Cinema 4D my weapon of choice is to change the type of the sphere from a standard type to I believe a not a tetrahedron let's see there we go hexahedron it's essentially a cube sort of punished into a sphere shape so that works pretty well here because when we flatten it out we have a largely quadrangle surface to deal with and that's fine. One of my one of my worries was that I would just be trying over and over and over to try to get this right at different resolutions. So I figured that I'd try to create this model keeping the sphere as an editable object and that way I can increase and decrease the resolution of the sphere as needed. See here if we reduce it enough it actually turns into a cube which is kind of interesting. But I settled on a resolution of about 120 segments, which give me a nice dense mesh like this. And uh, the next step was actually to use a freeform deformer. This started out as a cube and actually squashed the sphere down. So the idea here is that we've taken the sphere, and it's, it's still a sphere where I can change the subdivision if I need to. But I've essentially turned it into the pillow shape that we need. I'm going to reduce this to 60 segments just for now. Once I had this, the trick was to actually use a displacement map. In comparison with model with modern modeling techniques, displacement maps are actually kind of an old school method of creating primary detail. And I've seen a couple of my old school 3D friends use it for all sorts of strange things, but in this case, I uh, went to Google and I started to look for different Papasan chairs. Uh, this was pretty important because there's a lot of different types and there's this distinctive pattern right here that's this, this it's, almost, it's almost like a steel drum uh, steel pan sort of Caribbean instrument uh, it, it has these radial circles and this pillowing that sort of um, just radiates outwards. Uh, some of them use a more of a square grid almost like a waffle but I wanted to go for the uh, the radial design pictured here. So I started off with source material from a simple Google image search and uh, used that as my inspiration for the proportions and the divisions that were going to be created. And then that went into Photoshop and before you know it I ended up with something that looked a little bit more like this. So after adjusting the levels and uh, you know tweaking the brightness actually layering the pattern on itself but flipped horizontally to uh, make it seem more symmetrical a lot of those little tricks I ended up with something that actually sort of looked like uh, like a height map for a Papasan chair cushion 
Now at this point, we can apply it as a flat texture map. But in Cinema 4D, there's a trick you do where you essentially use a stick texture tag once you've uh, applied it. And what that'll do is sort of create temporary UV coordinates. That's important because in order to keep my sphere editable, I couldn't apply UV coordinates. A sphere in Cinema 4D comes with a spherical set of UVs, and I needed a flat set of UVs. So after applying this as a flat texture map, the stick texture coordinates tag was able to uh, help me out with that. Once you apply that that texture, it actually um, it actually sort of looks kind of silly, but uh, what you can do is create a displacer deformer in Cinema 4D. And what it does is it basically takes the displacement map applied to your object and renders it in 3D in real time so you can see what it looks like. And you can interactively increase or decrease the displacement. And here you see that pillowing that I'm getting. Now I will say that I couldn't simply use this texture to get my displacement. It just wasn't doing the trick for me. The indentations where the buttons were weren't deep enough some of the lines weren't pronounced enough and you can definitely see that when you increase the resolution of the sphere what I'm gonna do here is hide the freeform deformer I use and increase the resolution of the sphere up to about 125 which is I think close to what I used in the end if I turn off the cage view here, you can sort of see the pillowing effect happening. It's not perfect, but it just needs to be enough to sell the effect along with the texture map. And uh, so some of these indentations seem really deliberate. And I actually had to go in and paint the detail I needed. So I actually created a displacement map for the chair where I layered things and made sure that some of the lines were dark enough and I sort of painted in a lot of these lines by hand and darkened each indentation where a button would go by hand just to get the effect just right. You can't get an image like this by photographing the Papasan chair cushion. You kind of have to fudge it. What you can also see are some radial highlights here. So I just took a big soft brush and I just sort of puffed each pillowed area up a little bit just by clicking on it a few times. And the end result is this height map, which is a lot more detailed than the original color map derived from the uh, photographic reference. And uh, the end result is that you get this pillowing effect that, that really does sell it, really sells the effect. Um, but a little bit more on, well, before I go on, the again, the cool thing is that you can actually reduce the resolution of this sphere, uh, whether it be for low resolution stand-ins or uh, maybe you just don't need that much detail and you still get that that sort of puffed undulating look now I added a few more fine-tuned sort of tweaks to it now, when it was at its final resolution I added a mesh deformer here which is I'm, I'm not gonna get into it but I, it was essentially what allowed me to add a um, to add a crease along the edge here um, sort of mimicking the seam where the cushion, where one's half of the cushion is married to the other. So um, that was a little bit of a trick I used there. And then I added the buttons. Um, I actually used a, a surface constraint to help me place the buttons initially, but then I sort of um, fine-tuned them by hand later on. And uh, that's it. That's that's how you get your pops on chair cushion. And from there on, you can you can get your color maps and you can start multiplying the colors and having fun with, with the design aspect of it. Uh, but the, 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 end, the end goal was to create something that looked convincing. I think I did that. I could have spent some more time making it look a little bit better, but this was good enough for me. Uh, that's, uh, after this point, I used more freeform deformers to actually stuff it into the chair that it lived in. I think I have that here, so... I'm not sure how much construction history it has on it, but we'll see. So I've got I've got my chair, I've got my base, my seat, my cushion. So I think this may be flattened geometry. I have some freeform deformers here. 
yeah so at, at this point the cushion has been flattened uh, it doesn't have any construction history maybe this one now this this one is flattened even further I actually may not have this this cushion in its uh, deformed state but at this point I, I sort of used another freeform deformer to punch it into the uh, into the sort of satellite dish shape the, the parabolic shape that it needed to be and then I went in with the brush tool and sort of puffed the areas out right where they right where they touched the, uh, the spiral rail that holds everything together on this chair so that's that's the gist of how I got it to work it's it's just a sphere that was squished and then I used a displacement map now the squishing of the sphere I'd like to get into a little bit more because I think that was kind of a trick and let's see how that works if we create a sphere and we change it to the hexahedron I remembered it this time we can actually have our sphere here let's just make it a little bit bigger could have zoomed in there's no scale but either way and then we create a freeform deformer this is one of my favorite deformers in Cinema 4D just because of how versatile it is you can do so many different things switching to my four pane view here I'm gonna make sure I have a lot of Y segments I don't care about the X or Z but having a lot of Y segments is really critical once you've got these segments, you can either place the freeform deformer as a child of the sphere or simply place them in the same hierarchy so that they're siblings. At this point, you can actually take a you know a, a decent percentage of, of these points, let's say the first four rows on top, and then you can scale them down. And once I scale it down, I'm gonna move it down so it sort of matches a little bit more. And then I'm going to take first four rows on this side and scale them down. I'm just shooting from the hip right now, but when I was creating the actual Papasan chair model, I was, you know, using snapping and stuff to make sure that I got the, the sizes just right. And here you can see we're, we're creating our shape. Now you could have created this shape a lot easier if you started with a cylinder, but then you would have that same issue of having that that strange bit of geometry near the surface and in this case the only strange bits of geometry we have here are these points one right here one right here and so on and so forth but those are largely disguised by the pillowing effect so once you squash the top down like that you can just continue to squish the sphere using the freeform deformer and eventually you have something that looks kind of like a papasan cushion and once you're at this point you can simply hide the freeform deformer now i'm just going to take this object and i'm going to copy it into my other file that i've got open Let's see it's probably this one yes and so now i can paste my mesh in right here I'll just make it a little bit bigger and I'll hide my other work and then I can apply this displacement texture map to the sphere but the first thing you'll notice is that it, it, it's sort of applied strangely and that's because of the built-in UV mapping that this type of sphere has so to get it to apply properly I'm just going to remove this red let's make it white so in order to apply this properly, we need to actually create a flat texture map. Right now it's it's projecting the wrong way. It's projecting along the Z. And we just need to rotate it, snap to 90 degrees. And then we can scale it up until our texture just touches the edges. And this is what I was talking about where you, you sort of change the mapping to fit your needs. But at this point, this, this flat texture map will actually slide all over the place as we, uh, as we deform it. So what we can do here on the sphere is we can actually go to Cinema 4D Tags and we can get a stick texture tag. It basically takes what you've got right now and creates imaginary UV coordinates in Cinema 4D's memory. They're not real, they won't work like real UVs, but they work for this. And at this point, in the displacement channel, we load that customized image that I created earlier. And 
we don't see anything right now. If if we render, we see a little bit of puffiness happening. Just a little bit if you look near the edges. But we want to see this in real time. So we go to our deformers menu once again. This is all about deformers. And we take our displacer deformer. And as soon as we drop the displacer deformer into the hierarchy, we should get something. Oh, am I missing something? Do I need to... Oh, look at this. I need to take... I need to tell it where to take the displacement from. So I can tell it to take it from the displacement channel, maybe? No? It's been a while since I did this. Do we need to tell it which texture tag? There we go. So at this point, we're getting some displacement. It looks like my deformer might need to be bigger. See, I'm caught a little bit off guard right now because fall off is infinite. Direction, vertex normal, spherical, I think it's vertex normal. So we're getting our displacement, but it's not quite working the way I had expected it to. It's, it seems to be... Uh, probably need to tweak one of these settings here. Spherical fall off. Well, that's still going to give us the same thing. I know there's someone staring at the screen right now, screaming the answer at me. Let's look at what I've got for this other one. So this other... Oh, maybe it's the order. Maybe the displacer. Need there we go. So this is another screencast I need to do. It's on displacement order. So what's happening here is the displacer is acting on the undeformed sphere perfectly. But by deforming the sphere in the wrong order, we're screwing it up. So if we move the freeform deformer to before the displacer, we get the desired result. That one was actually the inspiration for a motorcycle tire that I created that I also need to do a screencast for. But at this point, you can sort of see how I created the cushion. Uh, if we remove the color map from this once again, just using normal mixing, we can see it doesn't look like much, but it's enough to sell the effect. And if we wanted to go the very high resolution way, we can make this so 400, and you start to see even the little bumps and creases in my displacement map starting to come through. But they never look quite as good as they should in this situation. So that's why I opted to create a relatively low resolution mesh and then do the rest of the work using the texture. So I hope this was a useful tutorial, a useful screencast. It's, it's kind of ad hoc. It's kind of from the hip. Uh, mostly because one of my commenters on, on my blog, uh, Tara, uh, asked me to, um, to, to create a little bit of a tutorial because she was having a little bit of trouble with it, creating a similar effect. And uh, uh, the, the TMI sort of angle of this is that I, I actually have a one month old. Uh, she, she's actually five weeks. So my time has been crazy lately and I'm, I'm just sort of running away to get this screencast done because I really love when I get feedback on my work and I love giving back to the community and trying to do that. So I hope this was useful. Um, if you like my work, be sure to check out my Turbo Squid store. I've got a couple of free things there, mostly stuff that you need to pay for. But if you need a motorcycle for a project, it's a good place to get one, I think. And uh, I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. I'm probably going to link this screencast in the Papasan chair um, post and then create a separate post for the screencast by itself so if you are regular on my blog thanks for checking it out if you're new welcome and uh, feedback give shoot shoot me an email or post a comment tell me you want to see a screencast and I will do my very best to make one uh, thanks a lot and uh, till next time